Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. It is Saturday, September 11th, 2021, and it is 9-11. Um, I'm a little floored by uh, this revelation the Lord is pouring out. Um, and in fact, he's been showing me um, about diatrophies for a while and um, so I'm going to read um, about this man that is mentioned one place in scripture um, and see what he imparts um, I have no clue how long this video is going to be but I, um, I I can't I can't uh, sit on this one so let's see we are going to be in 3rd John um, verses 9 through 11. Um, in fact, he was reminding me of the parallel he showed me. I, I don't remember when it was. It was a few months back, but it was the parallel between um, Psalm 91, verses 9 through 11, and Second Thessalonians 2, 9 through 11. Um, and I believe he's just adding this extra layer to that revelation. So I'm going to read 3 John 9 through 11. I have written something to the church. But Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us. And not content with that... He refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. We also add our testimony and you know that our testimony is true. Okay, so... The, um... So Diotrephes, um... was clearly a part of the church that, um... Uh, the Apostle Paul was speaking about so he was a leader in the church. Um, and he is described as he who likes to put himself first, who does not acknowledge the authority that has been given to Paul and the, uh, the apostles and the saints. Um... And also that he talks wicked nonsense against them. He also refuses to welcome the brothers and stops anyone who wants to, putting them out of the church. Um, so there's obviously a spirit of narcissism and division that comes from this man named Diotrephes. And um, I believe the understanding and the revelation that I've been getting is that is the spirit that runs... That's not the right word. That's the spirit that influences the false teachers and the wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, okay, I'm going to go there. Uh, wow, so it's... Wow, so we're just going to Jude. Um, I think I shared on Jude back in December of last year. Um, 
because it was very heavy on my heart last year uh, about the the judgment that was coming for the false teachers and the wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, many of them clearly are evil and they know what they're doing. Um, they are uh, they, they are evil knowingly and many of them are simply following after them and not really knowing that they're um, that they're being misled. So I'm going to go to sorry about that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I Okay, I'll just, so I'm just going to finish um, 3rd John, and then I'm going to go into Jude. I had much to write to you, but I would rather not write with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will t talk face to face. Peace be to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends each by name. Okay, so now we're reading Jude, which is one chapter, um, but it is very dense, um, with um, with warning. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called beloved in God, the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were, dis were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulge in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Yet in like manner, these people also relying on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but instead, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these people blaspheme all that they do not understand. And they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them, for they walked in the way of Cain, and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error, and perished in Korah's rebellion. These are hidden reefs at your love feasts. As they feast with you without fear, shepherds feeding themselves, waterless clouds, swept along by winds, fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead, uprooted, wild waves of the sea, casting up the foam of their own shame, wandering stars for whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these that Enoch, the servant from Adam, I'm sorry, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his holy ones, to execute judgment on all, and to convict all the ungodly of their deeds of ungodliness. But they have committed in such un an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are grumblers, malcontents, 
following their own sinful desires. They are loud-mouthed boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers, following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions. Worldly people devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life, and have mercy on those who doubt. Have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Okay. Um, uh, so yes, um, this Diotrephes. Actually, I looked up. Where did I? I looked up what his name meant, and I thought it was very interesting. Um, bear with me because I actually had it on my phone, but I'm recording on my phone, so I'm going to look. Um, oh, well, there's like a whole, there's like a little, um, Wikipedia, like description of him. So it says... His name means nourished by Jupiter. Um, <laughs> wow. I can't believe I'm... I'm really floored by this revelation. Okay, so... Okay, here we go, everyone. We are going to keep digging. Okay, so Jupiter as we know, is um, a planet in the solar system. Um, uh, okay. Okay, I'm literally looking at a Google search of Jupiter and seeing if the Lord is pointing anything out. Um, okay, so Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system, which is interesting considering that Diotrephes likes to put himself first and therefore be the biggest person in the room, so to speak. Um, I'm trying to, trying to see if there's anything else that stands out about Jupiter, but I feel like there's something more to it. Um, so all of you sky nerds like me, um, if you have any revelation or insight on Jupiter, please share them. Um, okay, what else? I'm actually going to go back to... The... Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the passage and reread it, 9 through 11. So it's 3 John, 9 through 11. Um... 
I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. Okay, so now I'm being reminded of the passage... Um, A form of godliness, but denying its power. Yes, Second Timothy. Okay, here we go. Second Timothy, chapter three. Okay, so this is. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna read the whole chapter. Okay, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self. Okay, there it is. Um, it's that spirit. Um, the narcissistic spirit. And I, and I do mean literal narcissistic, uh, which I do believe originated with diatrophies. Um, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth. Men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith, but they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as was that of those two men. Okay, so now we're seeing two other men. Um... I'm not feeling like we're going to read up on them right now, but I'm going to keep reading this, um, this, the rest of this chapter. Okay. So verse 10, you, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra, which persecutions I endured. Yet from them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Wow, that's a word right there, verse 12. Um, we need to camp there as well. I'll read it again. Uh, this is Second Timothy 3, verse 12. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in, Je in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Okay, so originally I came over here because of verse... Um, Verse 5, Second Timothy 3, verse 5, Having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, avoid such people. Okay, so we're going back to uh, Third John, uh, verse 9. 
I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. Um, so I think it's safe to say um, these would be... Um, this is in the context of leaders in the church. So these would be leaders who um, really are seeking after their own glory. They want to be in the spotlight. They want to be. Um, uh, they want to be revered for their own knowledge and whatever um, position that they have within the body of Christ. Um, um, and so. And yet, we see in verse 10 uh, that his mouth speaks wickedness against the very people that he proclaims to be a part of. In this context, the church of Paul's day. Um, and, and, not con and not content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. Uh, this is a very, um, this is a very wicked, evil spirit um, that I have shared before. I've actually, I felt I have personally encountered um, and at the time, I, I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I knew something was off, something was amiss. The, spirit, the Holy Spirit within me bore witness to my spirit that something was off. Um, and this was a while back. So, um, But um, these people and leaders that are that are under the spirit of and you know what this is something that I just I, I call it the spirit of diatrophies because it is a um, and really it, it's led by this by the evil one um, but it's a very particular um, character of a false teacher and a false prophet um, and a um, leader that is not uh, being led by the Holy Spirit. Um, let me see if there's anything else here. So, he refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. Um, this is a marker for this type of person, this type of leader. Um, it sounds silly to, to put it in the context of like high school or um, that's the best thing I can think of right now. But uh, in, in high school, there tends to be cliques and, uh, you know, just different groups of people. Um, and it, it, so it sounds very juvenile in a way because they're, they like to hang out with their own kind and they don't like to be um, inclusive with everyone, which is really sad because that's not at all how the church that, that is led by the Spirit of God should operate. 
Um, in fact, everyone in the body of Christ has um, has a calling and an assignment and a a role to play. Um, and so that should always be present in a in a God fearing church that you should know you know you're you're not just there to um, be told what to do in a sense um, you are there because you know hopefully that's where God led you but um, so but this Diotrephes and those who have his character and are led by that spirit um, are very much um, against that unity of the body of Christ. So, um, I think that's all. Um, if you are, you know, I know everything's madness right now, but if you are, you know, in a church and you're feeling this spirit, um, I certainly encourage you to take it to the Lord and ask him for guidance. Um, because it is important that we are not isolated, that we um, are a part of a church community of some kind. Um, and again, church is the body of Christ. It is born again, spirit filled people who love God, love the Lord, and are just seeking to follow Him and, um, you know, um, learn about Him. Um, and it can be two people, you know, there's no. There's no particular um, you know, you don't have to go to a building to have church is what I'm trying to say. Um, so um, I will say this also now that we're t now that we're talking about this because it's it's, it's very, um, it's one of the areas that I am very serious and passionate about, um, and that I, that I have a hard time with because, um, I, as I've shared before, I, I am a lover of the truth and I am very sensitive to, um, to deception, um, especially in the body of Christ where it shouldn't even be present. Um, and that's not to say, you know, we're, we don't have human error or we don't, you know, always, you know, get everything right. But what I mean is that, um, those that are walking in falsehood and misleading the people of God, um, uh, it's interesting because last year, in December, I actually had a very heavy heart for these leaders. And I really, um, I, I had a grieving for them because I could sense that we are, we were coming to a place where their time is up for repentance, you know, um, and, um, because, you know, God wants none to perish. He is so merciful to give everybody so many chances. Um, but 
Um, I'm also, um, and I think maybe that's just the spirit of the Lord giving me that sensitivity on both ends. It's like, I, I feel his mercy toward them. And then I also feel like, um, that righteous anger that he has because you know, his, his word is being misrepresented, his character is being misrepresented, um, and many souls are being misled in the process. Um, I hope this is all making sense. Um, I, I didn't expect to do this, but, um, so, I'm also, I'm, my allergies are really bad, so I'm kind of losing my voice a little bit, so I apologize for, for that, um, but if you have anything to add or share, please do. Um, with that said, um, I know many of you have been hurt by the church. Um, I am no exception to that. Um, and I want to encourage you that um, you can heal from that. And you can still find... Um, people who are seeking after God in a healthy way. Um, and I don't say that lightly because I know that there's a myriad of uh, situations and personal stories under that umbrella of church hurt. Um, and I pray healing over your life. I pray restoration over your life. Um, and certainly that you would receive the comfort and, and healing of the Lord in that area for you. So I think that's all. Um, have a good rest of the evening and I will talk.